Hello all, Alison here and welcome back to Words and Pictures. Over the course of August, I'm going to be doing a simple summer stencil series. I'm going to be quite busy this August, August 2024, because it's my month to teach in Fodder School 3. If you don't know anything about Fodder School, I'll put a link in the description down below. You can still, whatever time in the future it is, sign up and take the Fodder School classes, but follow up the details in the description below for now. Because August is going to be busy for me, I thought what I would do is create some some really short, I'm really, really going to try and keep it to a few minutes of fun just over the summer. I know we all want to be outdoors if, if we're in the Northern Hemisphere over these summer months. Uh, so I just wanted to create some little favourite stencil techniques, the ways that I like to use stencils. We've already had a look at using them with sprays quite a lot, but of course that's that's not nearly it. So I've gathered a bunch of stencils, I've sort of earmarked them in groups to do different little bits of technique with, and hopefully by the end of that you'll have lots and lots of backgrounds to play with. We might take a couple of them a bit further than just backgrounds, but you'll have lots of backgrounds to play with come September, October, ready to use in all sorts of ways, layering up, maybe die cutting some of them. We'll see how we go. So what shall we start with? I think I'm going to start with these two here that I thought I would do one of my all time favourite things, which is to put crackle paste through a stencil. So let me gather some of the things I need and I'll be back in a sec. Clearly, if you're going to put crackle paste through a stencil, you're going to need some crackle paste, some stencils. And as usual, I'm working on tags. I just find them a really stress-free substrate. If you go wrong or you create something you don't like, there is no wrong. If you create something you don't like, what's the problem? It's, it's a tag. It's a few pence. And this is really, really simple. So we'll go on to adding some colour afterwards because obviously this is this is not going to be enough. <laughs> um, so just some crackle paste. I've got a plastic spatula. I don't tend to tape my stencils down, but you could use a bit of masking tape on there if you're worried about it moving around. And then it's just like spreading, I guess, peanut butter or cream cheese. I'm probably not going to go for complete coverage of the whole tag because, as you know, I like imperfection and I like partials. So I've left some spaces, uh, but I've got pretty good coverage on that. And the key thing with this when you're adding texture paste through a stencil is you want to be able to see the stencil again. So you don't want it so thick that the stencil gets obscured. That's going to not give you a good finish. So it's putting it on and then it's just making sure you scrape back to give yourself a nice clear picture. Rest of the stencil paste can go back, uh, rest of the crackle paste can go back in the pot. And then I'm going to just peel that away. There is, of course, a little bit left over on the mat. That's fine. I'm going to pick it up. But one of the things I do sometimes do is I'll just take the spatula, flat of the spatula and just gently tap it up and down. Now you'll see that what's happening there is that occasionally I'm getting a bit of uh, running over into the other space, but the, the key thing is I've just created a little bit of extra texture onto that stenciling. It's not completely flat. When you're using paste with a stencil, it's quite important not to let the paste dry on there because that's going to compromise the stencil for the future. I'm moving quite speedily, so I'm just going to give that a spritz of water and I know that I'm going to get to it quick enough to get this stuff off. But in the meantime, I'm going to put the next one on. And you can see with the knife, I'm just scraping up the spare that was there. And now I'm going to use uh, this lovely blossom stencil. I'll put details of these products I'm using down in the description as usual. So hopefully you'll find everything there. And this tag with crackle is one that I used in a page in my altered book journal that lots of you wanted to see how to make the original tag. So I'm going to see if I can come fairly close to that. If you want to see the page I'm talking about, I'll link 
the books, books, books flip through of that journal down below, I'll probably link the quick musical flip through rather than the one where I do lots of talking in detail. <laughs> so exact same process. I'm not going for a full on all over coverage. I think I could do. No, I'm, I'm going to leave those bits around the edge because I quite like that. In fact, that's what we'll do. We'll do my other favourite thing around the edge. So again, just back to where I can see the stencil again clearly and I get a nice clean imprint. I'm going to put a bit of spritz of water onto the stencil itself. And then again, I'm going to scrape up from the edge here, clear up my crackle paste, spare back into the pot and lid on, particularly if you live in a dry climate, get that lid straight on. If you live in a really dry climate, Tim Holtz, for instance, who lives in Arizona, the guru, or creator of distress and influencer of us all, it uses a bit of clear plastic over the surface and then puts the lid on so that that really gets you a nice tight seal to stop your paste from drying out. The best way to stop your paste from drying out is use it up before that can happen. The other thing I quite like to do, so I'm going to grab that little bit back from around the edge that I put there. Because if you just scrape it into the edge, it will dry out quicker at that top edge. One of the things I quite like to do is just hand apply a little bit additionally on the edges. So where that stencil's got a bit messy down at the bottom here, I'm going to embrace that imperfection and give myself a kind of messy crackle at the edges there. The main thing with crackle is, crackle paste, you, you really need to let it dry by itself, let it do its own thing. If I heat dry this, it's not going to do the crackle thing. So I'm going to let those do their magic, completely crackle, and we'll come back and add some colour over the top once that's done. The crackle has crackled beautifully on these stencil tags. So I'm ready to add a little bit of colour. And there are a number of ways of doing this. I mean, there are infinite numbers of ways of doing this. Oh, look, I've already got inky fingers. Who's been playing today? What's the sign of a good time? Uh, all sorts of ways you could do this. I'm just starting with a kind of slight randomness about it. On this one, I'm going to put some Distress Sprays. I'm going to just get a little coating of that speckled egg, maybe a little bit of pumice stone in there. And one of the things about getting spray onto here is that you will see it runs really beautifully right into those cracks, highlighting that texture. So I'm spritzing on a bit of water to help that run around being quite loose, quite random, but just look at how that highlights the crackle texture. If you've got too much on there or it's doing something you don't want, grab that kitchen towel, get it back again. And then of course, I do want a bit more of the speckled egg because I love it. That pumice stone is quite full on. Um, I'll set you a little bit to one side so you're not caught up in this. Just let that start. And then I think we might want to put maybe a little snitch of a new distress spritzes into there as well. This is the peacock feathers. So this is going to give us a little hint of shimmer, but why not? A little hint of shimmer going onto there. And then I think I want, ooh, tough to say, maybe a little bit of salvaged patina. Is that not here? I'm fairly sure I got it out. Where are you? Okay, broken china then, if you're not going to cooperate. Let's put a spritz of that. See, that's, that's got a nice presence to it. And it's mixing with its, with what's already there, of course. So what's really quite nice is it's mixing with that shimmering spritz to give me something really quite tasty going on. Just going to let that meander around into the cracks, into the crannies. I might pick all of this up on a... On a tag, or have I got a bit of paper hanging around? Yes, I have. I've got some, some little squares of cheap watercolour paper, so I'm just going to not waste all that lovely ink that's on the mat. Mop-up time. See, and there, there's the next trio on the way. A little bit more water. That's 
probably got about as much as I'm going to helpfully get from there. So I'm just, I'm keeping, as I'm doing that, I'm keeping an eye on what this tag is up to and seeing what maybe else I want to do. I think I want at this point to dry that one. So I'm going to start it off with a bit of heat tooling. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back to it with some other ways of highlighting that crackle texture. If I dab that ink away, see immediately it reveals what's beneath. So while it's still wet, you've got all sorts of playtime. Distress inks remain reactive with water, but because they're soaking into the uncovered bits of the tag, you're not gonna be able to get it to go away completely anymore. So having said that was gonna be a quick blast. <laughs> I couldn't resist carrying on. And I think what I'm tempted to do is have a go with a bit of Distress Crayon and just add a little bit of additional colour. So the Distress Crayons, again, are highly manipulable when they're wet, before they dry, before they dry fully. You will still get some movement after they've done their drying, but really th this is playtime. This is when to get the playing done. So I've got a little bit of water on my finger. And again, just taking it over that texture, it allows the pigment to drop down into the cracks while the water runs over the top. And that's giving me a lovely grungy kind of a look. That's the peeled paint Distress Crayon. And I'm quite tempted to go in with the salvaged, oh no, it's Evergreen Bow. See, clearly Salvage Patina has all just decided to run away from me today. Okay, evergreen bow it is. Let's take it not quite in the corner. Give it a little spritz of water, which just makes it easier to move around. So you can spritz your finger or you can spritz the crayon direct on the tag. That's giving me a nice dark, earthy green up there. Quite enjoying that. I do want... Who's stolen all my salvage patina or everything? So have I put them somewhere for a project, I wonder? <laughs> this is the mystery of the vanishing salvaged patina. Let's give it another little spritz. Oh, I know, I know which salvage patina I can use. That's what it's going to be. Again, just highlighting this grungy texture. I might take a bit of green around this S in the middle. See immediately what that did. So you can rub it in or you can just leave it exactly as it is. Gives you that kind of extra grunginess. And you can see little bits of crackle because I'm treating this quite roughly and I'm using water and pigment. Little bits of crackle are flaking away. I don't mind. I'm embracing the imperfection of that. If I want to seal it all in later, I can use some matte medium over the top. But bear in mind that is going to move your pigments because these are water reactive pigments. I'm gonna dry that so that I can then show you another little layer of magic to just highlight texture, which is as simple as grabbing a blending tool and a plain old Distress Ink pad. Let's go with Vintage Photo because it's always good. And I'm just going to rub that lightly over the top to get me a nice grungy look. And what I think I also want to do is put a bit of that on the mat and spatter. <laughs> you knew it wouldn't be long before the spattering started, I'm sure. So that's just a little bit of vintage photo ink going down onto the tag grungy crackle the background one in fact I'm enjoying that so much I want a slightly darker version of it that's scorched timber if you want a dark version of anything these days <laughs> scorched timber is the place to go that it's given me quite a lot of pleasure.
So again, I'm just kicking off the drying of this so that that ink doesn't run away or soak in too much. I want it to dry in the droplets. I'm sort of tempted to do a little dip to get a few more up there. A little dip to get a few more down here. Ooh, it's scrumptious. It's like, um, what's it reminding me of? It's got a sort of secret garden, lost and found in the aged, weathered secret garden that's been hidden all these years. I've got this ink on the mat, so that again, I'm going to make the most of. I've still got these little Never want to let ink go to waste. So now there's some vintage photo going up onto there and mostly scorched timber. Little droplets heading onto the leftover paper. So that's one little bit of crackle tag dealt with using sprays. On this next one, I think what I'd like to do is start it out with some tumbled glass to be some sky in the background. So I'm just going to let that go everywhere. And so now I've got blue leaves and blue flowers. On the flowers, I'm going to go straight in with a bit of kitchen towel and just pick up some of that colour that's on the petals. If I spritz it with some water, I should get an even better effect. But you can see I'm just picking up where the tumbled glass hit the flower petals, just so they're not quite so blue. Other than that, I'm quite enjoying what's going on there, so I'm going to leave it be. <laughs> Am I going to pick up this ink as well? Why not? It's there. Uh, the scorched timber wasn't dry, so now I've ended up putting ink down onto the mat. Marvellous. So that is going to be a mop-up. This is why I would usually do my spraying in a box rather than out on the mat here, but you can't see it very well if it's in the box. I've experimented and it's just not, not satisfactory for filming. So I'm going to dry that a little bit. Take those away in the middle. So we've just got Got a lovely summer sky there. So that's tumbled glass, which is a lovely pale turquoise, but it's going onto the manila tag. So the yellow warmth of the manila tag is giving it that slightly greener tone. And then I'm going to take, what have I got here? Peeled paint. I've got rustic wilderness, and I'm just going to take these onto these leaves in places. I'm not going to, not going to be comprehensive about it. Again, I want, I want a loose look. If I wanted full detail, then I could be doing this with a stamp, with a detailed botanical stamp or something. But what I want is, is a kind of soft look. And having got that onto there, I'm going to take a little water brush. It doesn't have to be a water brush, it can just be a brush dipped in water. And I'm going to let that green spread out a little bit. Peel paint is quite a brownish green. So once I've spread these out a little bit to get a, a soft look to them, I'm definitely going to come in with a bit of mowed lawn to brighten up those greens a little bit because they're very, um, they're very kind of late summer green, almost like my new watercolor summer leaves. That green that you get right at the end of summer when things are just on the turn to brown. But that's it's not really what I was after. So I'm going to get the Mowed Lawn ink pad, pop a bit of that ink down onto there and use that directly onto here. And again, you can see I'm being, I'm not even really hitting those leaves. <sighs> I'm being soft, I'm being loose. It's going to be like an impressionist painting by the time we've finished, rather than a precise botanical study. If you want to do a precise botanical study, that's a different day. This is Monet's garden. Oh, and now I've said that, I need purples. 
there's going to have to be some purple in here now. So that's our soft leaves. Might pretend there's some leafiness going on down here and pretend there's some leafiness going on up here. And then I think it's going to have to be something like shaded lilac with maybe a bit of wilted violet. Those are two quite strong purples. You didn't know you were getting purple today, did you? I certainly didn't. And I'm going to just pop that in the centre of the flowers to start with. Just a gentle hint of colour. Um, wiping off the nib, I'm just going to let that spread out a little bit into the occasional petal. So there are darker petals, there are lighter petals. If you get too much, knock it back. You can see there are some leaves here that would really still like some green, so that's still on the mat. I can give it a little bit of that. And that does want a bit of peeled paint because it's not acid enough. Yeah, quite liking those subtle violets. But in order to have a real centre to those flowers. I'm going to keep adding a little bit of violet around the edges. Oh look, and then we got really impressionistic. I'm going to pop some violet onto some of these flower buds. There are kind of buds around as well as full blooms. And then I do want, I do want a sort of deep dark in the middle. <laughs> it might have to be Villainous Potion. This, like Scorch Timber, is a massively pigmented dark tone. So watch yourself. And there I am going to try and hit those bits of crackle a little more clearly. Or actually it's the gaps in between, isn't it? And that makes the crackle pop. That's quite nice. And you can see as soon as you've got the darks in place, that makes the light of the petal look brighter. I I almost want to stop there because I'm I'm enjoying that quite a lot. We might just have a little bit of purple in the sky just to give us a even more of a money. Hmm, not sure about that. Mix it with the green. Bit of water, soften it. Did too much. You can almost always knock it back again. That's really rather nice. Don't like that bit there. Knock it back. Scrumptious. <laughs> There's some ink on the mat. What do you think we should do with it? Ho ho ho. Sometimes purple is where it's at. Just occasionally. Nice. And having seen that, I'm quite tempted to go for just a touch. It's going to be very subtle. Of purple spatter into this tag before I mop up. And then I did really like those scorched timber spatters on this one. And I'm sort of wanting to grunge grunge this up a little bit. So let's give it a little, quick, a little dry. I want to soften those central purple bits a bit. Having said, I like the darks. I do, but they're just they're a little too much in your face at the moment. Beautiful. Little bit of vintage photo around the edges give us that echo of the other one. Oh, I just I just love what that does in terms of giving us a vintage look. And it's also where it's hitting crackle, it's highlighting that crackle texture again. I think we might need some scorched timber, scorched timber and the dark blending tool. Just for an even grungier edging, just in a couple of places, just to give it that almost charred look that 
that scorched timber does so beautifully. Ooh, really, really fun. Really, really fun. And I sort of want, as we had on that one, a little bit of this dark spatter. Just to give us a grungy Monet's garden. <laughs> what would he say? Sorry, Claude. But, well, one of the things he said was, I must have flowers and flowers and flowers. And so I've got some flowers for him here. So he should be happy. There we go. So grungy, crackled, beautiful textures. I will, of course, dive in for a bit of musical music and movement zoom in to show you those but here's here's a look at our mop-ups as well which are also pretty cool I'd say quite nice mop-up stuff going on there so wait around if you want to see a little zoom in to all that scrumptious texture if you've enjoyed that do give me a thumbs up leave any comments or questions down below I'll try to put as much detail into the description as I can of what I've used today if you haven't subscribed, please do. It'd be grand to have your company on this crafty journey. And I'll see you again soon for a few minutes of fun with simple summer stenciling. Happy crafting all.